everybody. We would ever like to let you know that it's okay to start eating. And we will pray later. The Lord knows your thing. First of all, just want to welcome you. It's uh, an honor to have you here as we celebrate our 56th anniversary as a church. And Mike and Ruth from Heartland being with us in the 20 years we've uh, had that partnership with them. I do want to, uh, it's, it is our anniversary, and I was talking to the actual, the kind of the only remaining charter members that are still around. And that's uh, George and Joan Hoffman and their daughter Debbie. And George is complaining, which he always does, uh, that he doesn't know anybody anymore. And I just, in 1974, in February, I came to interview at All Saints. And George was on the committee to interview me, along with Mark and Lori Nussel. And uh, I'm just going to tell it like it is, George. And they had made a request to the bishop that they wanted somebody with experience to come to the church. And when they found out it was me, they were not happy because I had absolutely no experience. And so in the middle of the interview, George gets up, and this is back in 1974 with his fireman's jacket on, and I can't quote him exactly because you wouldn't be happy, but he looked at me and he said, if you're going to be like the other young whippersnappers that come through here and get your feet wet after two years and leave, then you can just get the, out of here right now. <laughs> and everybody on the council goes, oh my gosh. The thing is, he said what everybody else was thinking. But just so you know, George, that you can know who these people are, I'd like you and Joan, if you can, stand up and just say thank you for being a charter member. Thank you. Don't speak, just stand up. Finish the story. Okay. <laughs> it was uh, you know, some 25 years ago that I uh, met Mike and Ruth for the first time and uh, went down there, as I mentioned on, uh, this morning in church, to uh, do the funeral for their daughter, who had just given birth to Timmy, who was their grandson and now was their son. <laughs> and uh, that'd be was the beginning of a long relationship with Heartland, which will continue on infinitum. But I can honestly say to you, Mike and Ruth, and of course to Pam and Joe who got it kind of started, that even though not all of us have been there, but because of our relationship with you and what you do for fragile kids, over the years you have made us a kinder and a gentler and a more generous and a more understanding community because we realize that in life, we can't go through this journey without supporting and leaning on each other. And you have taught us that without even having to say a word. And we just want to thank you for what you have brought to us. So just if you would just take a few minutes, Mike and Ruth, or both of you or one of you, just come up and just say a few words, and then we are going to show up. We're going to show a brief video of just our last, uh, our summer, this past summer. And then we, uh, the choir's going to sing a song, and some of the... Uh, we're going to have the alumni say a few words that you've gone to Heartland. And I, those of you who are here that have gone to Heartland, at, at the end of the evening, please come up here before you leave because we want to take a picture because a lot of you have come after many years uh, to be with us tonight. So to Mike and Ruth, thank you. We just really love you very much. Come on, cowboy. <laughs> hey, well, this is quite an experience for us. Um, we've come a long way to be with you again, and it's like coming home. It really is. You all um, touch our hearts, touch our souls, um, and you've done a lot to make Heartland what it is today. You know, one of my nurses said to me, you know, this is the house that love built. And I think she's right. And it's all of the love you've given, uh, the love we've given, the love all of our nurses have given, but mostly it's the love that the children bring to us. Um, some of them are severely damaged, 
Some of them come to us ready to die. Some of the doctors say, well, this child has two or three weeks only to live, but take them home and give them a good two weeks. Six years later, they're still with us. Because they're loved, they're well taken care of, and they're valued. And the time of their death is between them and God. And we never say never at our house, ever. Uh, we never give up on a child. We never discount them. Um, we try to give them the very best, even if we had some only live a week. Mike and I buried 34 children. That's the hardest part of our job. And it's the most painful. And two of them were our own children. So it's, it's something that makes you stronger. Um, pain does make you stronger. And it helps you go forward. And it helps you to be braver. And it helps you to be stronger. And death is not always an enemy. Some of our children are ready to go and we let them go. We do a lot of hospice care because a lot of our children are severely damaged by their parents, by the drugs their parents took. Um, some of them have severe genetic defects. Um, they've been burned, they've been beaten, uh, they've been terrorized. Um, the stories Everybody tells me I should write a book. Well, I don't have time, and I don't think it would be a bestseller. Because nobody wants to listen to that kind of horror that sometimes we have to live with. But occasionally we'll get a child adopted. <laughs> that was a blessing. It was a blessing. Made you stronger, didn't it? It certainly has. <laughs> <is. laughs> um, we are grateful for everything that you've done to help us. Um, we use every penny that's given to us for the children. Um, there are no salaries paid out of that. We have nurses that consider the children their very own. And that helps us to be able to come here today because I know there's someone there loving them and taking care of them and making sure that they're okay. Um, our daughter Dawn is my right hand. She, um, she fires me. <laughs> you can watch dishes, I can tell you that. <laughs> and change diapers, he's very good at that. And he does the laundry too. But my daughter Dawn handles all the business end of things. Um, and now, well, we call her our pit bull without breaks. Uh, because I send her to court. When we have to go to court and speak for the children, uh, I send Dawn. Because uh, she doesn't let anything slip by. When a child comes to our house, the minute they come through that door, they're our child. And heaven help anybody who hurts them or gets in their way. And that even includes their own parents. Uh, they're not given a chance to hurt them again. And we feel very strongly that every child has value and every child needs to be represented and every child deserves all the love that they can handle. Um, we have a wonderful community that helps us in Burning, Texas. We're, we're a small little community uh, and they're there for us. The Mormon church is there, the Lutheran church is there, the Methodist church is there, and even when I call 911 to take a child to the hospital, they say, who is it? Because they know. Policemen drive by and just to see if we're doing okay. And we have to go outside and say, we didn't do it. We really didn't do it. But, uh, they're wonderful. Our firemen are wonderful. Um, so we have an entire supportive community that extends all the way to Orland Park. And that is important to us and to, um, to everybody that is associated with us. And we are so grateful that over the past 20 years you've shared your children with us. Hopefully we've made an impression on them, and I know we have. Um, years ago, I remember some of the kids that get off the plane, they're just teenagers, and when they're leaving after a week, they're crying because they don't want to go. We had one year, we had a young man 
it's the most important moment that I've ever seen. He was holding a baby that we knew was going to die. He was rocking her in a rocking chair and he had tears running down his cheeks. So that, that tells me we must be doing something right and we, make it, we made an impression. Um, there is so much that goes on in our house. It's never dull. Um, we are always going in one direction or another and to doctor's appointments, to hospitals, to court, to parent-child visits, we're, we're, we're always very, very busy. There are many things that we're not reimbursed for, but you have always helped us with that. Um, we don't get paid for the gasoline that we do, that we use, or um, clothing. The, the children come sometimes with what's on their back, and we throw that away. And every child, when they come, gets an entire new wardrobe. So we now have a 15-year-old girl. We don't take teenagers uh, because they're, they're difficult. <laughs> <laughs> we don't take them. But this girl came to us from Dallas-Fort Worth area, and she's terminal. She has a terminal condition. But when she came to us, she came with 42 teddy bears and six outfits. <laughs> That wasn't very useful, but now she has more clothes than I do because the nurses buy clothes for her and she thanks us for every single thing we do. She can hardly speak now because we're not sure if she has MS or you know, one of these severe neurological diseases and we're trying to find out what that is. But Lizzie is a very happy, happy child and she came from a terrible situation and now we're making a difference in her life. And thanks to you, we'll continue to be able to do that. We have eight children right now in our house. My daughter and son-in-law have six children at their house and one in college. They have five children that they've adopted from our house who are all five little boys who are all medically specialized. Two of them are in wheelchairs, and uh, they have a challenge every single day. But um, we love them all. And um, do you want to say anything? <laughs> if I don't know where he is, he's at the barn on his tractor. <laughs> yes. But we thank you again for all this that you've done for us. And if any of you want to come out and visit us, you're always welcome. I just added on to our house. Um, we now have 9,300 square feet. So we have plenty of room for everybody who wants to come visit us. And we, we love company because it's tough talking to kids all day. We like some adult company once in a while. That would be really nice. But thank you again for everything that you do. Um, keep us in your prayers. And uh, also the tragedy that happened today in Texas. Um, please keep them in their in your prayers. We um, we're not far from them where we live, and it's a very poor community. It's a small community, and we found out that the. The pastor and his wife were on a little trip, and their 14-year-old daughter was killed. So um, I know that community is going to need a lot of prayers, and they're going to need a lot of emotional support. So please remember them in your prayers. We're going to take a moment, and uh, now it's not that big a screen, and we're going to just show you a, a, a relatively short video of our trip from last summer, and uh, you're welcome to kind of get up and stand around in the back and stuff, and then afterwards, we're going to invite uh, some of our alumni to come and say a few words about their experience, and of course, at all times, there's still food, and the bar is open, but uh, let's take a few moments and show a video of our last uh, summer's trip to Carlin Chilizzo in Bernie, Texas. Hey, ladies and gentlemen. If we could have your attention for a moment. I uh, I had asked some of the uh, young people who have gone to Heartland over the years that if any one of them would like to come up and just share a word about what the Heartland experience has impacted their life. And so, would anybody like to start? All right. 
Feel free to line up right here. <laughs> Look at the brave one. Well, I'll kick it off. I guess that'll be great. Um, so the very first time I went to Parkland was summer of 2005, so many years ago now. Um, I was in eighth grade at the time, and I didn't really think I knew what to expect when I showed up. My brother had been summers before and had told me a little bit about, you know, what everything was like, but I don't really think I, I knew what I was getting myself into until I got there. Um, for, for Ruth to wonder if Heartland has made an impression on us, impression is an understatement. Um, Heartland is one of the most special places that there is. Um, I think just in and of itself, the fact that there are so many of us here who have gone, you know, their first time was 10, 15 years ago, um, and everyone magically found their way back here. It takes something really, really special to do that, and, and Heartland is that place. Um, I'll never forget one of, one of my one of the stories that has lasted with me, and I know with my brother too. He, in fact, he wrote an essay about it in, in high school. <laughs> um, but uh, one of the kids, his name was Dorian, and Dorian, when he was very small, was burned um, in a crib fire, lost um, one arm and both legs, severe burns over the rest of his body. Um, Dorian was was one of those kids that just always kind of kept you smiling. Um, and he, not, he refused to be anything but a normal kid. Remember one night we were playing cards and you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't know how to, how to go about that situation and you know you have your, your cards in your one hand and usually you'd use the other hand to go and pick. And so we offered, you know, we can hold your, we can hold your cards for you if you, know, you wanna pick your card that you're gonna play. And he said, well no, I, I can do it, I can do it. He had a wheelchair, I hardly ever saw him use it. He would scoot himself around and get around all by himself. He just wanted to be a normal kid. And I think for me that was when I realized that he was a normal kid. He wasn't different than any of the rest of us um, because he'd been treated that way by some really, really awesome people that had taken him in, taken him in and made him feel like family um, and always had a smile on his face. My brother once said to, you know, how can I how can I complain about going to soccer practice when someone like Dorian can be happy all the time? So truly, truly a special place. Some of my most memorable summers, things we'll never forget, of course, all thanks to you guys. So That's wait. What happened? Where, where's Gloria? This is gonna be really hard to follow. She said everything that I would say. Um, I am one of the original people to ever go to Hartman. I was 12 at the time, back in 1998. Um, I think there were nine of us that went that first year. And talk about not knowing what to expect. We had no pictures. We knew nothing of what we were walking into. And. I don't even, oh, we walked into a home filled with, I think you probably, I think you had 10 kids at the time. And just every, the love that was there when you walked in the house, those kids weren't medically sick. They weren't, you know, treated like that there was a problem. Um, they were treated like any other child. And we jumped right in. Um, I learned how to change, uh, a stomach um, feeding tube because he leaked all over me. <laughs> um, that was my first experience. I think we were there like two hours and I was holding him and I'm like, oh my gosh, something's going on. And Ruth calmly took me aside and said, okay, this is what we do. We, you know, pull it out. He needs a new one. We push it back in, plug it up. We're good to go. Okay. She, I mean, she, when you were there, you were a part of the team and you learned how to do anything that needed to be done. Um, for years, I used to talk to Ruth all the time. I want to be a nurse. I want to be just like you. Except I can't really handle needles, so I don't know what to do. Um, so she told me the next best thing, and I became a special ed teacher. I, I truly 100% feel that all those years spending time there, um, learning from the best. Uh, I even got to go to school with the kids a couple, t a couple years while I was there. Um, I went, I'm also gone the longest. 
and JJ just can't keep me out of there. Um, I went all the way through until I was 21, and um, I'd gone back on my own. Um, I met my husband through there. <laughs> you know, um, I, so many memories, so many amazing memories. Um, I talk to my children all the time about it. I can't wait to bring them to see you and to see the amazingness that goes on. I keep trying to convince Kenny that we should open our own uh, foster home up here. <laughs> He's not really going for it right now. <laughs> I'm trying. Um, I just can't thank you enough for the opportunities you gave me um, to be able to see what you do and be a part of it. And I love you guys so much. So I've been to Harlem the past two years, and so, okay, so two years ago was my first time, and uh, when I first went, you're, I went and I was really not sure what to expect. I, I think I had seen a video or something, I've, I've heard talk of it, and uh, you, you go there and it's just like you're part of the family, and um, everyone from the church was great, and you go and it's, you, I mean, you work, but it's it's good work. You you go and work outside, and then you go inside and work and uh, play with the kids, and you you feel like you're like meant to be there. Like um, uh, I don't know. It's just like an indescribable feeling being there and feeling the spirit of the kids. It's really something special. Um, so uh, I think that's all I can add. Really. So. summed up as is, Heartland is just one of those places. It's so remarkable. It has made such an impact on my life. Hi, Jim. <laughs> um, looking back on the first year that I went, I think it was like 2006, 2007, so about 10 years ago, I didn't know what to expect when I first went. And so I went in with an open mind. Leaving Heartland after the few days, I knew what I wanted to go into, and I ended up pursuing a degree in therapeutic recreation, so working with children with disabilities. And I have to do a big thing. So, and I already knew what I wanted to do, but by going to Heartland, it really gave me that reassurance. I want to work with kids with disabilities, such as, like with Heartland, and to add to some of the stories. I know Dorian was already talked about. I remember one of the times uh, during dinner, or one of the, one of the days, he did a handstand. And I remember saying to him, Dorian, I can't even do a handstand, but you can do one. Like, what What the heck? So that's by far one of my favorite stories. And to this day, I still tell that story to my friends and still talk about her and how much of an impact it has made, truly made on my life. So I want to just thank Mike and Ruth for the wonderful three years. <laughs> So like Holly, I also, her and I actually went on our first trip to Heartland together. Um, the difference was I was a very awkward eighth grader. <laughs> like, so awkward. I wore this weird hippie headband. I had way too much luggage. I had no idea what I was getting into. Um, but Heartland, I mean, like going off of what everyone said, it really has paved the way. It's, um, it inspired me to do what I do. I mean, um, Particularly, there's a little boy there named Johnny, and I think one of the things that you can see is a theme that we all, there's a child there. Like, there's always this one kid at Heartland that sticks out, and I believe that every kid has had one of us go there and say, this child did this for me. And um, Johnny, from the first year I went, didn't really want to talk to anyone, didn't really want to interact. Um, he was set in his ways. I mean, he loved his family with you guys, and, you know, um, but by the last year, <laughs> you know, I mean, there's a lot of stories in between, but... By the end, him and I were joined at the hip, and I just adore that child. And um, I think something, you know, a big thing, and so I'm, I'm a social worker, and in college, there was this whole view of a social work lens, um, and I always feel that I always brought a Heartland lens to it. That, um, you know, I go into Chicago Public Schools, I run a, um, a program with um, students who are facing homelessness, 
and I'm going in with that Heartland lens. That's what <laughs> keeps me doing what I'm doing when it goes rough, when the kids, you know, it's not always easy. And, you know, remembering that they just need love. That's the main thing. I can sit here with paperwork, I can sit here with all of these things to go over with them, but really they just need us to show them love. So, thank you. Okay, so I have went to Heartland four times. I started when I was a freshman in high school and I just went this past summer. Um, Heartland has really taught me a lot of things. All of the kids have always been so sweet and they taught me no matter what you're going through, everything's okay and there's always a bright side of everything. And from the second I went there, Mike and Ruth were the best people. You felt just like you were at home, you know, as everyone said. And the kids were just so sweet and I really don't really have any stories. Everyone said I mean, everything about all the kids. <laughs> All right. Uh, the first year I went, I think I was in sixth grade. Uh, Don let me go a little earlier because I was known as Bukes. I was the grass cutter. So I always got to go, so I always got a little special a special treatment being uh, parked in spot number one as well at the church for four years in Sandra. Um But the crew uh, to get a lot of friends there. Uh, Don, Mike, Ruth, Mike, you guys, we love you guys. Every, th every time we went, we loved it. We cried when we left, we cried when we get there. Um, I'll probably cry a little bit now thinking about it, but that's all right. Um, the other thing that no one really talked about is how hard Malka works you. My God, does he work you. Especially because he knows our family being in the garden center all the time. I mean, it was this man is up at 3:30 in the morning, getting his first cup of coffee. He's waking you up at 4:30. Like, all right, Bukes, let's go. It's time to get out there and get going. So you really put your butt to work. It was a lot of work, but it, it also it, it, it grew you. Um, it grew you as a person, and it's a good thing. So I just want to say I appreciate everything you guys always did, uh, did for us. It's a uh, it's a pain in the ass to have us come out there and do that all the time. Um, I think it went from what we went to go, we go out there for what a week. I mean, and I don't know how long the previous years have been, but that's really, really tough for you guys. I mean, cooking breakfast, lunch, dinner, doing all that. I, I just can't thank you enough for letting us into your home. And, you know, thank you, everyone, for coming here and doing this. They deserve this support. And we love you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So for all of you who don't know me or had don't recognize me, I'm Christina Babcock, better known as Christy. It's been a long time since I've been to the church. Um, I was part of the original crew that went down. I was 14. Um, I think there's nine of us. There was Casey, Heather, me, Julie Wynn somewhere is around here also, and then a couple other people that aren't here. All girls, of course, the first time. We all got to room in the same room. Think about that, guys. 14, nine, like 14-year-old girls. Sorry. <laughs> so, but yeah, it was fun. Like we, we got to do work, but like everybody else has said, there's just something about it that just you go home with it. There's no, you go there as a as a little fourteen year old girl and you come home like you know what your life is. You know, like the little problems aren't that big of problems because there's just so much more to life than what we thought was so bad. And yeah, I mean, just the I think I went three years that I went and. Just the things that you learn and you get taught. Like I left high school and I went and became a medical assistant and I worked pediatrics for a long time. And that was inspiration from you guys. We had, I think Brad and Caitlin, Eric and Alex, and Timmy was my man the whole time we were down there, which I saw pictures of him, that's crazy. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was just an amazing thing. And that's one thing about even just All Saints in general, is growing up in the church, it just changes your life. Like, everybody that I still know that went there, they're just the most amazing people you know. Like, I mean, Catalanos, I've known you my whole life. Sokols, I saw you guys sitting over there also. I mean, that's that's me. The Janix, I mean, I, I don't even know what my life would be without the Janix. Sislows, I see you guys out there as well. All right. But that's that's my life. And that's what you, like, when people ask you, like, what inspired you growing up, all things. That's what it is. I've been gone for 16 years, but it'll never, they'll never leave you. So, so I love you guys. And I love you. I mean, it even brings people from Colorado back out here. So, yeah. Thank you very much.
inspiring words. The choir is going to sing a song that uh, we share every time we have a baptism, Children of the Heavenly Father. And then after that, I'm going to ask the, uh, all the kids to come up and uh, we'll group picture. But the band is going to come back after the choir is going to sing. But I turn over to our music director, Doug, and the choir, Children of the Heavenly Father. Doug. And I got to give credit to Mark Nussel. I said, we're going to be, the choir needs to sing something here. We need to participate. So we came and Mark said, well, Heartland, Children of the Heavenly Father. Why don't they you know, be more appropriate? So that's why we're doing it. There's no baptism tonight. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to keep this real brief. <laughs> really. Um, Ruth is my cousin, and we grew up together, and then they left for California, and we kind of lost touch. And then she came in, and we had a 
cousin's reunion, and we found each other. <laughs> and we went down, and we saw what they were doing, and then we've been going every year since with the kids, but you know, the kids say what they did for them, but the thing of it is to what the kids do for you. These kids, are, you just are phenomenal when they go there every year. And they just, they get so much out of it and they give back just as much as they get. I've loved every single one of the kids that have gone, Joe and I, and I'm just, I'm so glad we found each other again. <laughs> Thanks, that's all. Well, if you hadn't found each other, we wouldn't be going there, and we wouldn't be here tonight. Please remain seated. We're going to share the benediction together. The band's going to play, and please stay as, as long as you would like. It's been an Are we honor. Take a picture? And then as soon as uh, we're done with the benediction, all the people that have gone to Heartland, please come here really quick for a picture, because Len's going to take it. So let us share the benediction together. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious unto us. The Lord will give us countenance upon us and give us peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Enjoy the rest of the evening. Thanks for coming. Let's have a picture. The band's going to play. It's been great having you here tonight. God bless you all. Bye.